Hello. Thank you so much for joining me on today's Connected Show. I'm your host, Peter Edlund. On this show, we connect you with leading experts in the field of supply chain management, where you'll learn best practices, practical advice, and much more. Very fortunate today to have a special guest, Professor Benafa from San Jose State University College of Engineering. Uh, Professor Benafa specializes in Internet of Things. He does a tremendous amount of research in this area. And today we're going to discuss the impact of Internet of Things, or IoT, in the supply chain. With that, let's connect with Professor Benafa. Pleasure to actually have you on board here today on the Connected Show. So uh, I'd like to actually ask you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, Professor, tell us a little bit about um, who you are and how you got involved in IoT. How did that come about? Well, um, my name is uh, Professor Banafa, Ahmed Banafa, and I'm a faculty at uh, San Jose State yeah. in San Jose, California, and um, uh, in College of Engineering. And uh, uh, the IoT, the starting of the IoT is actually not uh, before, even before the time of the of the world itself. IoT became, you know, like a, a brand or some buzzword here. Uh, it used to be named something else until Cisco. Uh, coined this, this name by naming it as Internet of Everything. And then it came down to Internet of Things. So my involvement was with, when I was listening to that speech by, uh, the, uh, uh, by Cisco about the Internet of Things, it actually brought the whole picture together. Because we have so many moving parts around us looking at, okay, we have drones, we have smartphones, we have smart houses, we have smart devices, we have Nest, we have, you know, drop cam. Now, anybody ever thought about connecting the dots and look how the different parts of the machine can talk to each other? And that's the key thing. That's the simplest definition of the uh, Internet of Things. How can make everything around you connected, sensing, intelligent, and you know, and, and reacting to, to the external environment? How long have you been uh, involved in this? How many years has this been sort of evolving for you? I mean, you've been, you know, uh, teaching this specific topic for a long time or has this sort of evolved as part of your curriculum? Well, it's a research. It's actually an interest in research. And, okay. uh, and the, uh, the, the whole thing is coming from when you hear about something and you get excited about it because it's really answering something inside you about Internet of Things. I mean, the, the word itself is really interesting when you, hear, when you hear it. It's confusing for so many people. If you ask so many people about it, they'll give you three or five different definitions. By the end of the day, it's uh, the, the, the whole premises of Internet of Things is the same. We're talking about, uh, you know, object from different uh, perspectives. Everybody thinks about it from their own perspective. Um, now, this is my third year to be heavily involved with the Internet of Things uh, through my research, articles, conferences. Uh, I've been connect, you know, uh, uh, contacted by the, uh, the biggest IoT uh, conference uh, in the United States for 2017 in Santa Clara and I'll have a meeting with them about what would be the you know the topic to talk about it. Another one is in San Francisco which is about smart cities uh, attended by some people from all over the world you know from London to, to Australia they would like to know, uh, you know what what's in it you know for them here in the Bay Area and the Silicon Valley to make their cities smarter. So so for the past three years it, it, is became, it became really, really intense about the Internet of Things. And so many of the universities around it, from Stanford to Berkeley to Santa Clara to San Jose State, they will have special topics. Those special topics is talking about the Internet of Things. I see. Well, let me ask you this. I'm kind of interested in what your predictions are relative to uh, supply chain and the use of IoT in the supply chain and maybe how we kind of conduct our lives today and maybe in the future where IoT will sort of influence uh, what we do in the future, but particularly supply chain. Are there some comments that you can make around that? Well, I'm writing an article about it. Actually, this article is, is, is revolving around the supply chain and, and uh, you know, to be fair, it's supply chain management, you know, that, that's what we are trying to improve. Right. And it's, it's summarized by four letter S-A-D-R, S-A-D-R, which means sense, analyze, decide, and response. So the you sense, you know, we have a sensor on the uh, let's say that that truck or the product, and you get the information, you analyze this, you decide, and then you respond with this one. And a simple example is temperature. If you are, if you're transporting food, and then you're going from a state where it is hot to a state which is cold to a state, you have to make sure that you have this information by. And there's actually a term for this one, which is something called in-transit visibility. Uh, we know about the starting, we know about the end, we know it's going to end, but we'd like to know what's going on in the middle, which is this is this is where 
a lot of money, a lot of information, a lot of product will be processed in that in that part. And this is the case. This is where the IoT will come and help. I see. Now, with respect to some things that maybe you know people like in the maybe two or three things, the key things that people might like be surprised to learn about IoT. It's it's sort of this notion IoT is used as in some cases maybe even considered a buzzword. Right. Um, but maybe there's some things that would surprise uh, the the listeners here that are that are watching the show. Do you have any any uh, surprises that we might want to know about? Well, I mean, I I have an example that I gave it in, in a conference in Australia, which is uh, your medication bottle, that that famous orange bottle. Uh, we have a sensor, and that one after because it's really sensing the weight and the volume of this of the of the container. If the number of the pills that you're taking below a certain number, it's going to send a message to the pharmacy, and the pharmacy will send a message to the to the uh, doctor, and they will confirm that you need it, and then they will order that one, process it for you. A drone will be taking that medication to the level of your room, in the apartment, or in the building, and then they will scan your eyes to make sure that you are the right person to receive that, and and then once you once they confirm this, and they will give it to you, and that's one thing about it. The other one is the smart mirror. And, and you have a mirror that is really high definition, which will have a memory that will save images of you all, you know, over the days and months and years. And then they'll compare it. They say, well, you know, I have an appointment with a doctor for you because of your eyes, because if you look, you know, terrible today or you're tired, I cancel your meeting. Uh, don't close. worry about that. <laughs> and the, the, an example that also I, I give it in one of the conferences is when we have people working many hours, like seven and more than... 17 hours, you know, and, and what happened? The computer will shut down. They will save everything. They say, go home. Time to go, to go home. <laughs> That's it. Because, I mean, what you do when you're not producing anything. So, so the, I look at it, you know, Peter, from one perspective. Uh, we would like to make everything around us act as a human being. It's, yes. not the, it's the other way around. We'd like to automate everything. Now we'd like to make everything humanized, which means the laptop will be humanized. We'll say, okay, you've been here for so long. You're not producing. Just go home. It's like your mom. We come to you and tell you, yeah. go home. You're tired. That's it. Yeah. And this is, this is the end result here. Interesting. Well, I can tell you, you know, uh, from my experience in dealing with supply chain, there's, a, there's all kinds of room for potential disasters to occur. And... Um, Having sensors that can either forewarn um, or at least make people aware of the potential of something happening that would be disruptive or maybe an opportunity within the supply chain to reroute um, particular goods or products or services that would either reduce cost or optimize the supply chain. Are these the types of things that you foresee with IoT? Yes, absolutely. Those I'm mean, actually, I, I, you know, I have six items that that will, uh, will benefits that that will will be uh, the first thing we will benefit from uh, uh, from the IoT, which is reducing the assets, you know, losses we have here, which yeah. is exactly what you're talking about, yeah. and saving the fuel cost because that's big. Now we have the, the you know the prices of the gas is low, but for how long? You know, it will be a time it's going to go back and. And also the temperature control, and not just in the food, in so many things. I mean, we have so we have electronic equipment that has to be at a certain mm -hmm. temperature. And also, you're talking about the warehouse inventory, which is the which is just in time inventory. It's very important. It's we talk about it, but now we're going to include that segment which is missing, which is between the beginning and the end of the supply chain. Uh, the inside, which is uh, the using the inside from the sensors and how the the consumer are using the products. And that's will give us information about it. For example, for agriculture, the farmers, you know, when, how they use the equipment, what will be the best way for them, what time we should deliver these equipment to them. And also reduce, you know, the redundancy. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the biggest problems in for things like UPS, Federal Express here. Now, here, 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 here's uh, two, you know, conclusions here. Oh, actually, opportunities. Uh, for the existing uh, supply chain systems, you can have an additional layer of intelligence which is adding the sensor, adding the analytics. Now, the other side, which is a big opportunity, is you sell the businesses a complete solution. That supply chain management, which is IoT enabled, yes. which means everything from the beginning to the end. You don't have to add this at the top. Now, that's a huge opportunity for every company who's really interested in improving the supply chain. Interesting. Well, you know, I guess maybe one of the things I'd be interested in is what are the challenges with IoT as you see it right now? Um, have you sort of like real world challenges? I'm sure like anything else, um, 
adoption rates, uh, technology, things of that nature. Are there things that you can point to in your research that sort of are challenging currently? We need standards. We need to have a unifying standards for the different devices, sensors. By 2020, we'll have 26 billion devices, which is, if you think about how many people actually live in on this planet, just multiply this one by 3.5, you're going to see that. That's the number of the devices here. Now, when you look at this one, we need standards. Then those standards, which if you manufacture anything like the camera I'm talking to you, you know, to here, I just plug it in in the laptop and it's working. Now that's that's one thing we need. We need something for this for the sensors, for the analytics, you know, for the uh, you know for the response, which is the other way coming to the sensor about you know increase the temperature, reduce temperature, or information to to the driver. Okay, stop, turn right, turn left, uh, GPS communication, you know, RFID, you know, information. The, the unifying standards at multiple level will make it so easy for the different devices to talk to each other because they're talking the same language. That's that's one one. I part. see. And the number, yeah, the number two is the business model. You know, when I talk about two opportunities for the businesses, how can I convince a company to invest in R and D so they can have a complete solution IoT? That's another challenge, which is the business model will give them the money. Yeah, that makes sense. Obviously. Now, you know, when you kind of look at the companies that are sort of getting into this now, and there are probably several that are either jump-starting projects, uh, starting to get a competitive edge. From your perspective, how do companies start and get this thing going? Is there a process or a methodology that you've used to sort of incubate this into a project to get a company to put money behind it, real money, to make right. a difference? How, how do companies go about jump-starting a an IoT initiative. Okay, if, if it's an IoT in general, then everybody heard about this, right. you know, and they know the the benefits of this. And a lot of big companies they have solutions on multiple levels. Uh, there is an interesting trend now, something called Chief Supply Chain Officer, which is, uh, this one is this person uh, he or she will be responsible of incorporating the IoT concept to make the digital business, which is the whole concept by big names like. Partners and foresters, which is the pushing for the digital business. What is a digital business? Digital business basically is using the IoT to be part, an integral part of everyday activity, everyday operations for the business. Now, for the businesses to to incorporate or to adopt the IoT, they have to see the saving. They have to see the money. They have to see saving on all the three elements of business. You know, time, money, and people. Once they see that one then no CEO, no CFO, or, or, or anybody with the C-level will never say no to that. We say, yeah. yeah, of course, we're going to go for that. There's no question about it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, listen, Professor, I really appreciate your time. I wanted to thank you very much for this short little overview of IoT and your view of where IoT is going in the supply chain. And um, with that, I'm going I'm to let you go. But I appreciate your time, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.